Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to our evening devotion. Hope you had a good day, uh, that uh, it was full of God's grace and love, and uh, that now at the close of this day that you're able to close it out with him as well, uh, with a little devotional thought, and um, then to, to be at peace, knowing, knowing who your God is and who you are to him. Uh, so we're going to have a little devotion tonight, and at the end of it, I'm going to go inside, actually, and then we're going to sing um, sing a song. We're going to sing uh, verse 1 of hymn 592 uh, with, with my family here, and if you want to be ready for that, you've got a hymnal at home, maybe, you can open that up and turn to hymn number 592 in, in Christian worship, um, and then we can sing that together. Or feel free to just listen along, too. That's That's fine. So the devotional thought that, that we have tonight is it's based on Genesis chapter 42. And that's a longer chapter. It's in the middle of the story about Joseph. And what happens is it's the time of the famine. Joseph is already, he's been to Egypt, he, he's there, he's been in prison, he's uh, gotten out of prison, and Pharaoh has uh, promoted him to the highest uh, spot in the kingdom. He's second in command to Pharaoh. And uh, we, we've passed the seven good years uh, of agri agriculture, so all the, all the food has been gathered up and, and it's been saved, and now we're in the years of famine. And, uh, and it's a bad famine. Everybody is wanting for food, not only in Egypt, but in the surrounding areas as well. And it reaches even to uh, Joseph's family, his brothers, his father, and, and all of their relatives there in Canaan. And so when those uh, people there are feeling the, the famine, they decide, well, we need to go to Egypt and we need to buy some of this food because we've heard that there's food there. So Jacob sends his, his other sons down there. He sends all the sons except for Benjamin, the youngest, uh, wants to keep him around because, uh, because he's lost Joseph. And, and Joseph and Benjamin were the only sons of his wife, Rachel. Um, who was his favorite. So Benjamin is like his favorite son now. And he doesn't want to send him down. So the rest of them go. And when they go, they meet Joseph face to face. They don't recognize him at, as Joseph. It's been so long. Uh, and he looks so different, having now grown up there in Egypt. But uh, he recognizes them. And he knows right away who this is. And um, he decides to put them to the test a little bit. He's got some things for them to go through and uh, he gives them the food that they're wanting but also treats them pretty pretty harshly. He demands that, uh, that one of them stay there in Egypt in prison until they can go back and bring back their youngest brother because they claim to have one. And, and he's playing like he doesn't believe them, like they're spies or something and, and he wants them to prove that their word is true. So, so this is what he, he puts on them, and, and they, for their part, they're, they're just shocked and surprised at all of this, all these accusations coming their way. It doesn't make sense to them. On their way back, they check in their bags, and, and not only do they have the grain, but there's silver again back in their bags, so it, it got returned to them, but it looks like they stole the silver, right, and stole the grain. So they're all worried and, and afraid about what's going to happen. And, and they say to each other, this, you know why this is happening? This is happening because of what we did to our brother Joseph. All those years ago, the way we treated him, the way we, we almost killed him, and then, then finally we decided, well, okay, we won't kill him, but we'll sell him into slavery. Um, that awful thing that we did, and then lying to our father about it, saying that he was killed by an animal, uh, it's all coming back on us now. And... Um, so they were feeling the guilt, and no doubt God was using this as a, a way for them to come face to face with their sin, with what they had done to Joseph, and, and finally bring them to repentance over it. And the, the story continues from there. We're not going to go through all the details now. It's just a portion of it that we're reading tonight. Um, but we want to consider what that means for us, too. You know, does that ever happen to you where things happen in your life and it, re it reminds you of something that you did before? Something maybe that you did wrong before and, and you wonder to yourself, is this because of that? Is, is God punishing me for this? 
you know, all these, maybe it's years later. And, you know, certainly God does use the things in our lives to bring us face to face with our sins, right? Uh, he wants to lead us to repentance uh, in, in any way that he can. And maybe he uses the events of our lives to make us remember of something that we had done in the past that, that we never dealt with, that we never wanted to repent of, that we, that we uh, just ignored and tried to sweep under the rug. Uh, and if that's the case, if, and if that works to, to bring us to acknowledge that sin and to say to God, you know what, what I did here, that was wrong, and I'm glad you're finally bringing me face to face with it, well, that's a good thing, that's a blessing. And where's our comfort in that? Comfort is that uh, because of Jesus, there is nothing left to make up for, right? No matter when we might have done some sin, no matter uh, how long ago it was, Jesus has paid for that. And we don't have to answer for that sin anymore. Jesus did it for us on the cross. And his resurrection, which we celebrated so recently at Easter, that, that's our proof, right, that, that his death did pay for our sins uh, and and we can be free and clear of it the guilt doesn't have to haunt us anymore um, none of it is is pinned to us at all God has forgotten that sin and he offers us his grace free and clear and so we can rejoice no doubt as as the brothers of Joseph also rejoice later in the story when they when they finally find out who it is they're dealing with and how Joseph feels towards them he, he too he's forgotten uh, the sin. He, he forgives them. He wants them to know how much he loves them and how God has worked all of this out for the good of everybody involved. Well, hopefully you can see that too in your life, right? That God uses the things of your life to show you that he's working everything out for everyone's good. Your sins are paid for and uh, eternal life is yours then because of what Jesus has done. So uh, go to bed with that peace in your hearts and uh, we'll say a prayer together now. Lord Jesus, we thank you that uh, you came into this world to pay for all of our sins. We thank you that you don't remember our sins anymore, that you don't bring them back to haunt us, uh, but that you do lead us to come face to face with them and acknowledge them so that we may repent and, and look to you for our forgiveness. Help us always to do that, Lord, and uh, give us peace in our hearts through all that you've done. We pray in your name. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to take us inside now, and uh, we're going to just sing that verse of hymn 592, as I was saying before. So if, if you're just joining us, feel free to grab a hymnal or just listen along if you'd rather do that. So I'm just going to come over to the table. And we're going to have a few others joining us here. Come on around, everybody. to thee, my God, this night. We're just singing verse 1. So, here we go. All praise to thee, my God, this night, for all the blessings of the night. Keep me, O oh, keep me, King of kings, beneath thine own almighty wings. Forgive me, this night the peace of our God knowing that he's forgiven you and he doesn't remember your sins at all anymore. Have a great night everybody. Blessings. Bye. Bye. Bye.